Hey everybody, Fishman here. Welcome to another video. This is Fishman vlog number 39. And as you can see, I have set up the duplicate two-stage box filter. And it's going to stay here until it's ready. And then I'm going to see if I can replicate the results I got from the first box filter in the ammonium chloride tests. Now the only difference between this one and the other one is this one does not have uh, carbon in it. Because if you remember from the original test, I was just seeing if carbon will absorb the ammonia and it did not so there's no point in uh, doing that again so what's going to happen here is i'm going to use uh, straight lava rock the first time and i'm going to see what kind of results i get from that and then depending upon those results i will probably re redo it one more time and that would be with gravel and we'll see actually if there's a difference in the amount of surface area and therefore the amount of bacteria available uh, between uh, lava rock and gravel Currently, I am retesting the undergravel filter, but I'm not retesting the original one. The original filter I had made was kind of an homage to the original undergravel filters. In other words, uh, it had a lift stack in the corner, and that would sit, you know, obviously in the back in the corner so you would, could hide the lift stack easily. Since then, I have modified my designs for undergravel filters, and now the lift stack's in the middle, and I am going to test one of those instead. So it's going to be one of the newer versions, and we'll see how that works out. Depending on, again, the results I get from that, I may actually end up retesting the original original, uh, but we'll see how that goes. I mean, I've been getting lots of requests, and thank you very much for all those. Uh, but it is going to take some time to get to them all, so I'm going to do what I can, and hopefully none of the retests or ideas will get lost in the works. But uh, if you see uh, that you're one of the things that you suggested is not being done, every now and then just remind me, because uh, like I said, there's so much going on that I may just end up missing it, and hopefully we'll get to it all. So while I was rambling on, what I'm doing here, it's time to prune... As you can see here, the Red Luigia. And you're going to get to see a little bit more of an interesting comparison between uh, the tank on the left, which is gravel-only growth, and this one here, which I'm fiddling with right now, which is soil. I'm not going to actually show you the pruning for the commercial growth substrate, but uh, you're actually going to get to see the material I took out of that as well. So you're going to get to see a little bit more of a... Uh, well, what I'm doing here is I'm pruning because as you can see it's getting close to the surface. So I'm not really actually pruning all of it back. So you're not going to see all the growth, but you're going to see the excess growth, which is kind of an interesting comparison because as you can see, the plants themselves don't really have much in the way of difference for you know, how they look, how robust they are, uh, color, all that sort of stuff. They all seem pretty much comparable. But uh, you can see here... There is a drastic difference in the amount of actual material. So this is just trimming off the pieces that are too tall and are bending over the surface. So the one on the left is gravel. That one there is uh, soil. And the one on the right is uh, the commercial growth substrate. And you can see there's a considerable amount of difference in the actual amount of material that needs to be pruned off to keep them you know, from just growing to the surface and curling over and... Uh, just becoming a, a nuisance that way. So again, these really do need to be pruned. Uh, not so much this one here, uh, which was in the uh, gravel only. It could probably have gone a little bit longer, uh, but the other two definitely need to be pruned back. Now, I'm not going to uh, continue that experiment anymore because it's, it's pretty much run to a conclusion. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to replant these, and I'm going to replant them in uh, soil. So they're going to get in soil, and I am going to uh, just spread them around in the, in the fish room. Actually, in the end, I think I put them in the gravel only and also the soil only tanks uh, just because I have the space there. And like I said, it doesn't really make any difference because like, those experiments have already run their course. So there you go. That will, again, grow out. And because you see some of them I've snipped off the top, uh, they'll end up branching out and uh, producing more plants. And that's actually really kind of cool, too, because I do want these to get a bit more bushy. And then, of course, I'll definitely have use for these in the long term. I actually really like this plant. Uh, it is doing really well, and it has, it has a nice look to it. So this is the uh, gravel-only tank. And as you can see, it's getting a bit of color now because of the tannic acids from the pot of uh, soil in the back. And it's pretty much comparable to this one now. So we'll see how the Valisonari does in that tank. So we'll see that soon too. So there you go. 
both of them are planted up now and we'll get some more plants growing. The next clip involves some preliminary results from cutting vallus in area like grass. Now when I had originally done this I had expected that the cut edges will look a little bit more ragged and I thought there might be a little bit of rot on them and possibly even some dieback on this but for the most part it looks perfectly fine. Uh, there's some regrowth happening here and some new shoots so hopefully in time this plant will actually look really nice again. On to a little bit of aquaponics. I've managed to get a little bit of basil, that's what this is here, and I'm going to uh, root that and then set that up into uh, the planter up top. And I also managed to get a sweet potato and I'm going to cut that up and hopefully get some shoots off of that as well. Someone has suggested that I can trim this as long as I left a little bit of uh, the green there, and I did. And by the way, it actually tasted really good. And as you can see, it is beginning to regrow, so that's kind of cool as well. This plant here, I'm not entirely sure about. It uh, is doing really well in the other setup, but I think there might be a little bit too much water here for it. And as you can see, one leaf has fallen off, and I just haven't removed it yet. And I'm going to leave it in here for a little while longer, and then possibly I may have to replace this with something else. So this system here is actually beginning to have some interesting results, and I think it has to do with that soil. Uh, as you can see here, the uh, terrestrial plants are doing really well, and they're growing quite nicely, and even these ones here, which I'm just rooting, uh, they're beginning to grow a little bit, and they're beginning to send shoots down. Unfortunately, I didn't really get a good uh, view of uh, that happening. I mean, actually, there's another piece of basil right there. Uh, but I know what's happening, but I didn't really go in there and pull stuff out because uh, if I disturbed it too much, I may tear some of the roots. So I just decided to leave that in there, and then in time, hopefully, I'll, when I take that out to pot it, I'll show you uh, how it all turned out. But as you can see, in both chambers, the java fern is doing really well, and in the tanks themselves, I'm beginning to get uh, some extra growth, which is really kind of nice. Everything is nice and green and healthy and growing, and the only change in this system and the other one is the addition of those pots. Uh, nothing has changed for maintenance or feeding or addition of fish or anything else. And as you can see, there's lots of new shoots here and also here. It's uh, They're doing really well, and the credit has to go to those pots. So I am going to expand that a little bit, and hopefully I can replicate that as well. If you are at all a little squeamish about dead fish, you may want to skip the next clip and go to 805 in the timeline because the flower horn platy has passed away and it was not a pretty death. There is a new tank boss in that tank and he fought him and killed him and they all just ganged up on him and as you can see, he is a mess. There's the new tank boss and he's all happy. It's amazing. I've had aggressive fish many times. I mean, I kept tons of African cichlids, South American cichlids, and all sorts of stuff. But every now and then, the aggression of small little fish like this uh, is its equal. I mean, obviously they couldn't hold their own against larger fish, but uh, in amongst themselves, they can be quite brutal. So there he is, the new tank boss, and he's strutting his stuff. So unfortunately, I'll never find out if that was uh, genetic or not. Unless, of course, he managed to pass that trait on, and there'll be a female in that aquarium, which will give birth to some fry, and those fry will grow up and hopefully exhibit that hump. But platy fry grow really slowly, so that is going to be a long wait, I suspect. So we're getting near the end of the video now, and as always, if you like this style of video, please like and or subscribe, and let me know what you think below in the comments section. Comments on this video or any other, and suggestions for possible future videos, or just share your experiences in the aquarium hobby that's always welcomed as well. The angel fry are growing quite nicely and it's getting to the point now almost where I will start culling out. I'll start pulling out the ones that are not doing as well, uh, separate them out in another aquarium and let them grow out there. Uh, they'll go on to uh, clients aquariums that sort of thing and I will keep a few back. Uh, ones that look better, ones with even finage, uh, ones with color that I like and uh, I'll keep them. Probably about a half a dozen or ten uh, like this one here, and I'll keep those uh, for future breeding projects. And uh, like I said, it's hard to tell until they are a lot bigger uh, how they are actually going to end up looking. Uh, but this one here looks good, at least for the start now, anyway. So thank you very much for watching. I'll see you in the next video, and bye for now.